Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to wherever you are around the world. Hope everyone's having a good day. Welcome to Trucky Diaries number two in this multi part episode. This is part six where we're talking everything Star Wars celebrations, which is taken from the Twitch channel where we're streaming Euro Truck Simulator 2 and talking about a range of topics from earlier in the month, which was straight after Star Wars celebrations. So I hope you enjoy. Um, so, sad, sad news. Yes. The next season of Bad Batch is going to be the last. Yes, yes, I was so happy when they, they actually announced it. Oh yeah, the story's not done, yeah, it's going to be the final season. Oh. And yeah. um, when I, because I'm, I was the one that was always watching the live streams and I was updating Tom um, on stuff because oh, yeah. he wasn't watching it. And um, his reaction in the Discord chat was no. And I said, <laughs> what do you mean no? He said, that means more trauma. Trauma. Oh, then, God, uh, yeah. Then I, then I said, final trailer. Then he was like, that's even more trauma. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to the next one that comes to the UK, which will be in the next 20 years or so. So, you know, who knows? Um, well, like I say, the last one was 2016, and I think the last one before that was 2007. So, uh, next time I'm coming, I'm bringing my wife and kids, yeah? Yeah, basically. <laughs> uh, I refuse to go to London, it's full of English people. Brains? Whoa! I'm English! Whoa, okay? wait a minute! I'm English. It's Japan in 2025. Yeah, it is. Jay, what do you mean droids don't count? What do you mean? Are you suggesting, Jay, that I won't have kids and I'll have droids instead? Well, you're not wrong. <laughs> Who doesn't want a pet chopper? The little the little psychopath running around your house. I'll be honest, I'll take a couple of B1s. They can be reprogrammed as, like, service droids or whatever, oh, that's fine, but I, oh, I'll take a couple the, of B1s. Um, what was it? It was the Hasbro stand. Have you seen the new little chopper that's coming out? Yes, I did. Oh. I got to go off and have a little play with him. Oh my god, he looks it's so, so good. adorable! He's, he's so sassy. He is so sassy, it's brilliant. Oh. The guy that went through all the, the stalls for the for the, the, live, the live stream people, there is a mm. UK droid building club. Oh I yeah, did, did not, you not know? I did not know this. Oh, oh my yeah, god. Ah, so, fun little bit of trivia for you then. The, um... The UK droid builders have been a thing for a while. Uh, I think they started off as the R2-D2 Builders Club. Um, but they created a droid called R2-KT. Uh, R2-KT is an astromech, looks exactly the same as R2-D2, but the blue bits are painted pink. Mm. Um, so yeah, it was created, the guy created it sort of in honor of his daughter. I think she had cancer at the time. Um, hence hence she, the pink, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was a favourite colour, she loved R2-D2, so it was a little thing to be like, oh look, this is for you. Um, and she did get better, so she's all fine now, you know, it's not a sad story, but obviously that was that was the inspiration behind making it. Yeah. r 2 KT got a lot of support in the online community and the fandom. Like, people love it. The droid turned up to a lot of events, uh, it turned up to a lot of conventions, especially things like Celebration, uh, and it got a bit of a following. It appears in The Force Awakens. Oh. R2 yeah. KT is canon. See, Jay has literally just put in chat, just before you said that, he, he, he said it, it appears in Clone Wars, if I remember. But now you're saying it's... Um... No, I'm pretty sure it was in The Force Awakens. Force Awakens. It, I mean, it could, it could be that there's one in uh, Clone Wars, but the actual droid that he made mm. uh, is in The Force Awakens. One of the I droids that, that, they, that they featured on the live stream was the massive R2-D2 because the, somebody mixed up centimetres and millimetres. So it's this massive R2-D2 which you can <laughs> sit inside and drive oh around. My oh my yeah. god, yes. So imagine the normal size R2-D2 but ten times taller. Oh um, my god, yes. Or I think it's more like... Two, twice or three times taller, but you get what I mean. It's yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's very, very big, but they've kind of embraced it because you can get into it. You can, yeah, it's very, very. That's cool. brilliant. Yeah, I love it. But yeah, that's a fun little bit of trivia. I mean, to be fair, 
all of the groups um, have been recognised in one way or another. For example, uh, costuming groups, the 501st was called upon to provide stormtroopers for the final uh, couple of episodes of Mandalorian Season 1. Mm. They didn't have enough stormtroopers for the, the Moff Gideon bit, and rather than try and make more suits of armour, they called them the local 501st garrison. They turned up mm. and trooped for the day and, you know, were extras. Um, I mean, the, the 501st and Rebel Legion have always been invited to, uh, like, film events. So any, like, red carpet events, they turn up in costume. Yeah. Um, I think the Mando Mercs are now getting that kind of recognition. Like, it, it's great. They they get the recognition now, and it's it's fantastic. They put in such good work as well. Jay says it appears in the episode where R2-D2 and some other astromechs go on a secret mission. Oh, is it in that one? Okay. Apparently it is. I mean, I'm re-watching Clone Wars at the moment, so... Uh, Let I us mean, know when you come across it. I mean, I can't even remember when it is. I'm at um, Season 2. I'm at the Mandalore, um, the Mandalore arc with Satine when she first oh, appears. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Anakin Skywalker has just committed a war crime. In fact, I watched that today, where uh, he uh, basically kills the guy in the back. It's every uh, episode, isn't it? What, war crimes? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. <laughs> One of the many war crimes that, that were committed, <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. I was talking of droids actually appearing in live action. So I know that Chopper appears in Rogue One. I've seen the screenshot shared. I know that it's a thing. Everyone talks about it. But every time I watch Rogue One, I cannot for the life of me find him. Hmm. I cannot see him. I know which scene he's supposed to appear in, but I can never spot him. I didn't even it, know it this. Bugs me. Yeah, yeah, Chopper is in Rogue I, One, I'm pretty I knew, sure. I knew, I knew apparently whether it was actually shown or it's just been confirmed. The ghost was in the Rise of Skywalker scene, but yep. that's that's as much as I know. I didn't know he was in Rogue One. Yeah, the ghost appears in the Rise of Skywalker when the everyone turns up to battle the fleet. Um, you can just see it for like half a second probably. Yeah. It just appears into shot and then like the camera moves off. But um, but yeah, Chopper is actually in Rogue One when they go to uh, Endor. Yeah. Is it Endor? Yeah. Uh, no, sorry, Yavin Base. Yeah. Uh, when they go to Yavin Base, he is there in the background. Um, but yeah, every, every time I've watched it through, I cannot see him. Mm. I've seen all the screenshots, so I know it exists, but... I can't find it myself. It bugs me. I've even looked up the timestamp in the past. Oh, yeah. To try and find Chopper. And paused it on the exact timestamp. And I still can't say the fucker. <laughs> so, yeah. Go on. Lego sets. Yes. Lego sets. We have some new... Dia... What are they called? Di di diaphragms? Is that what they're called? You know what I mean. What? The diet... Yeah, basically the, 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 the basically the adult sets that have more detail in um, that we have because it is the 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi, which it by is. the way, side note, is coming back to cinemas because of it. Um, I was just about to mention. Yeah, the diorama. Yes, Jay, that's what they're called. The diorama Lego set. So there's one for the chase in the uh, the um, speeder chase. In the indoor forest. Oh, okay. Um, so there's that. There is the Emperor's throne room with um, uh, Palpatine, Luke, and Vader. There's that as I well. Thought, I thought that was already a thing. Nope, not not from what they because they they've been made specially for the 40th anniversary and they were unveiled oh, okay. at celebrations. Um, oh, okay. So there's that, and there's also a new. X-wing, so it's on it's on a stand as well, and it looks yeah, very I've very seen cool. The very very cool, and I want. I haven't purchased a Lego set in a very long time, but that that X-wing has 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 um has my calling on it. Yeah, I um I did purchase some Lego. Just because al I was there's there. Also and I was like, a, there's also also a new Lego set for the uh, Tales of the Jedi, which is obviously for the more preschool kind of um, age range. But as we know, 
Lego does not have an age range. No. Um, and people will will buy it, just like we will probably be. We will probably still watch Tales of the Jedi when it comes on May fourth, despite it being aimed at and the uh, language being for preschool. We will probably still watch it, regardless, because it know. is it is Star Wars. I don't know if I will. <laughs> <laughs> I um I never watched Resistance. No, I didn't watch Resistance either. Why was that aimed at a younger audience? I mean, I could be wrong, but I think it was. Oh, okay. Mm. Which was kind of what oh, oh, that's at least the impression I got watching trailers and stuff when it was coming oh, out. Right, okay. And it put me off it. I was like, nah. Oh, it... Rain's pointed out there is a there is an age range for Lego. It's naught to ninety nine. Oh yeah, well, y yes, there is an age range, but what if you're a hundred years old? Do you get arrested? You're too old. Sorry, uh, sir, you're not allowed to purchase this. Leave. Also, so, Reigns, you've mentioned the UCS Venator. Uh, is that a thing? I didn't uh, know they was doing the Ultimate Collector Series Venator. I would love that. That would be fantastic. Oh, Tom was talking about this the other day, because apparently it's a rumour. It's not, I don't think anything has been confirmed, but apparently it's a rumour. Oh, I'd love that, though. The Venator is one of my favourite ships, like, come on. Jay's just said, jailed, exiled, executed. As soon as you turn 100 and you, you buy a Lego set, that's it. You're done. Take your pension away, throw you out on the street. You have too much money. No. Oh yeah, Rain said it's a rumour as well. Okay. Yeah. I would like for that to be a thing, though. That would be yeah, very Tom, cool. Yeah, Tom, Tom is also excited for that. So, yeah. He he right. also spends way too much money on Lego and other things. He's getting a 3D printer, and he's like, I'm going to be printing so much Star Wars stuff, and I'm like, no, Tom, don't do it. Stop. <laughs> Stop it. I'd, I'd like to and learn... I'd like to learn a bit more about 3D printing because I could then print off my own clone armor. Hmm. But obviously, I'd need to know what I'm doing to be able to split it down. Because obviously you're not going to be able to print like a whole chest plate on the, it. The, the funny thing is, I am really in the past. Because the last time I, I knew about 3D printers was probably university. When they were basically becoming a, a really big thing. So I, I in my mind, I still think 3D printers are like three grand. And Tom's like, no they're not. They're like maybe 800, 700, 800 now. Yeah, it depends on what one you go for. You can get them for like yeah. a few hundred quid. Though. Like, it's see, in my mind, they're still three grand. 